Good morning and welcome back to another episode of Matins in the Morning. It is Tuesday, August 20th. It is the Memorial of St. Bernard. My name is Nathan. I'm joined by Carrie this morning. We're coming to you from the St. Thomas More House of Prayer, where it is our mission to pray and promote the Liturgy of the Hours. You can find out all about our retreat center over at our website at liturgyofthehours.org. We are in Volume 4 of the Liturgy of the Hours 4-volume set. I just have a few page numbers for you today. We'll, we're in week four of the Psalter, so our opening hymn, our antiphons and psalms, will begin on page 1129. Our first reading and responsory is from the Proper of Seasons, on, beginning on page 128. And lastly, our second reading, responsory, and concluding prayer will be proper for St. Bernard, abbot and, do, abbot and Doctor of the Church, beginning on page 1333. As always, we'll begin with our prayer that we pray in preparation for the Divine Office. You can find this prayer along with these page numbers in the description below the video as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Spirit. Amen. Amen. Open, O Lord, my mouth, to bless your holy name. Cleanse my heart from all vain, evil, and wandering thoughts. Enlighten my understanding, and kindle my affections that I may worthily, attentively, and devoutly say this office, and so deserve to be heard before the presence of your divine majesty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, in union with that divine intention with which you praise God while you are on earth, I offer to you this hour. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. With hearts renewed by living faith, we lift our thoughts in grateful prayer to God our gracious Father whose plan it was to make us sons through his own Son's redemptive death that rescued us from darkness. Lord God, Savior, give us strength to mold our hearts in your true likeness. Sons and servants of our Father. So rich God's grace in Jesus Christ, that we are called as sons of light to bear the pledge of glory. Through him in whom all fullness dwells, we offer God our gift of self in union with the Spirit. Lord God, Savior, give us strength to mold our hearts in your true likeness, sons and servants of our Father. Lord, let, let my cry come, come to you. Do not, not hide, hide your, your face from me. me. O Lord, listen to my prayer, and let my cry for help reach you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Turn your ear towards me, and answer me quickly when I call. For my days are vanishing like smoke. My bones burn away like fire. My heart is withered like the grass. I forget to eat my bread. I cry with all my strength, and my skin clings to my bones. I have become like a pelican in the wilderness, like an owl in desolate places. I lie awake and I moan, like some lonely bird on a roof. All day long my foes revile me. Those who hate me use my name as a curse. The bread I eat is ashes. My drink is mingled with tears. In your anger, Lord, and your fury, you have lifted me up and thrown me down. My days are like a passing shadow, and I wither away like grass. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, Lord let, let my, my cry, cry come, come to you. you. Do, Do not, not hide, hide your, your face, face from me. me. 
Be attentive, Lord, to the prayer of the helpless. But you, O Lord, will endure forever, and your name from age to age. You will arise and have mercy on Zion, for this is the time to have mercy. Yes, the time appointed has come, for your servants love her very stones, are moved with pity even for her dust. The nation shall fear the name of the Lord, and all the earth's kings your glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion again, and appear in all his glory, then he will turn to the prayers of the helpless. He will not despise their prayers. Let this be written for ages to come, that a people yet unborn may praise the Lord. For the Lord leaned down from his sanctuary on high, he looked down from heaven to the earth, that he might hear the groans of the prisoners, and free those condemned to die. The sons of your servants shall dwell untroubled, and their race shall endure before you, that the name of the Lord may be proclaimed in Zion, and his praise in the heart of Jerusalem, when his peoples and kingdoms are gathered together to pay their homage to the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Be attentive, Lord, to the prayer of the helpless. You, O Lord, establish the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. He has broken my strength in mid-course. He has shortened the days of my life. I say to God, do not take me away before my days are complete, you whose days last from age to age. Long ago you founded the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will change them like clothes that are changed, but you neither change nor have an end. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You, You, O Lord, Lord, establish the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Listen, my people, to my teaching. Give ear to the words I speak. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the days of Ahaz, king of Judah, son of Jotham, son of Uzziah, Rezin, king of Aram, and Pekah, king of Israel, son of Romaliah, went up to attack Jerusalem, but they were not able to conquer it. When the word came to the house of David that Aram was encamped in Ephraim, the heart of the king and the heart of the people trembled as the trees of the forest tremble in the wind. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out and meet Ahaz, you and your son Sherazabashub, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool, on the highway of the fuller's field, and say to him, Take care you remain tranquil and do not fear. Let not your courage fail before these two stumps of smoldering brands, the blazing anger of Rezin and the Arameans, and of the son of Ramila. Because of the mischief that Aram, Ephraim, and the son of Ramila uh, plots against you, saying, Let us go up and tear Judah asunder, Make it our own force, and appoint the son of Tabeel king there. Thus says the Lord, This shall not stand, it will not be. Damascus is the capital of Aram, and Rezin the head of Damascus. Samaria is the capital of Ephraim, and Mamalia's son, the head of Samaria. But within sixty years and five, Ephraim shall be crushed and no longer a nation. Unless your faith is firm, you shall not be firm. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the nether world, or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask, I will not tempt the Lord. Then he said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary men? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall be living on curds and honey by the time he learns to reject the bad and choose the good. For before the child learns to reject the bad and choose the good, the land of those two kings whom you dread shall be deserted. 
The Lord shall bring upon you and your people and your father's house days worse than any since Ephraim seceded from Judah. This means the king of Assyria. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And shall name him Emmanuel, for God is with us. Do not be afraid, Mary. Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. And shall name him Emmanuel, for God is with us. From a sermon by St. Bernard, Abbot. Love is sufficient of itself. It gives pleasure by itself and because of itself. It is its own merit, its own reward. Love looks for no cause outside itself, no effect beyond itself. Its profit lies in its practice. I love because I love. I love that I may love. Love is a great thing so long as it continually returns to its fountainhead, flows back to its source, always drawing from there the water which constantly replenishes it. Of all the movements, sensations, and feelings of the soul, love is the only one in which the creature can respond to the Creator and make some sort of similar return, however unequal though it may be. For when God loves, all he desires is to be loved in return. The sole purpose of his love is to be loved, in the knowledge that those who love him are made happy by their love of him. The bridegroom's love, or rather the love which is the bridegroom, asks in return nothing but faithful love. Let the beloved then love in return. Should not a bride love, and above all, love's bride? Could it be that love not be loved? Rightly then does she give up all other feelings, and give herself wholly to love alone. In giving love back, all she can do is, is to respond to love. And when she has poured out her whole being in love, what is that in comparison with the unceasing torrent of that original source? Clearly, lover and love, soul and word, bride and bridegroom, creature and creator, do not flow with the same volume. One might as well equate a thirsty man with a fountain. What then of bride's hope, her aching desire, her passionate love, her confident assurance? Is all this to wilt just because she cannot match stride for stride with her giant, any more than she can vie with honey for sweetness, rival the lamb for gentleness, show herself as white as the lily, burn as bright as the sun, be equal in love with him who is love? No, it is true that the creature loves less because she is less, but if she loves with her whole being, nothing is lacking where everything is given. To love so ardently then is to share the marriage bond. She cannot love so much and not be totally loved, and it is in the perfect union of two hearts that complete and, perf and perfected marriage consists. Or are we to doubt that the soul is loved by the word first and with a greater love? Lord, how great are the hidden treasures of your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you. They are filled with the bounty of your house, and you give them to drink from the stream of your delights, which you have stored up for those who fear you. Let us pray. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father St. Saint Saint Bernard, Bernard was filled, filled with, with zeal for your house and was, was a radiant light in your church. church. By, By his, his prayers, prayers may, may we be filled with this spirit of zeal, of zeal and walk, and walk always, always as children of light. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks. We'll now conclude with our prayer that we pray following the divine office. To the most, most holy and undivided Trinity, Trinity to the, the humanity of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ crucified, crucified to the, to the fruitful, fruitful virginity of the most blessed and glorious Mary, ever virgin, and, and to the whole company of the saints, be everlasting praise, honor, and glory by all creatures, and to us remission of all our sins, world without end. Amen. Blessed be the womb of the Virgin Mary, which bore the Son of the Eternal Father, and blessed be the breast which nourished Christ the Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.